Bala, night the fourth. The Tharmas rode on the dark abyss. The voice of Tharmas rolled over the heaving deluge. He saw Loss and Anatharman emerge in strength and brightness from the abyss. His bowels yearned over them. They rose in strength above the heaving deluge. In mighty scorn, red as the sun in the hot morning of the bloody day, Tharmas beheld them. His bowels yearned over them. And he said, Wherefore do I feel such love and pity? Anion, Anion. Lovely, lovely, Anion, how is this? All my hope is gone forever. Fled like a famished eagle, eyeless, raging in the vast expanse. Incessant tears are now my food. Incessant rage and tears, deathless forever. Now I wander, seeking oblivion in torrents of despair in vain. For if I plunge beneath, stifling I live. If dashed in pieces from a rocky height, I reunite in endless torment. Would I had never risen from death's cold sleep beneath the bottom of the raging ocean. And cannot those who have once loved ever forget their love? Love and rage the same passion? They are the same in me. Or those who love, like those who died, risen again from death, immortal, in immortal torment, never to be delivered. Is it not possible that one risen again from death can die? When dark despair comes over me, can I not flow down into the sea and slumber in oblivion? Anion, deformed I see these lineaments of ungratified desire, the all-powerful curse of an honest man be upon yours and in Luva. Thou, my son, glorious in brightness, comforter of Tharmas, go forth, rebuild this universe beneath my indignant power, a universe of death and decay. Let Arnatharman's hands weave soft, elusive forms of man above my watchy world. Renew these ruined souls of men through earth, sea, air, and fire to waste and endless corruption. Renew thou, I will destroy. Perhaps any and may resume some little semblance to ease my pangs of heart and to restore some peace to Tharmas. Loss answered in his furious pride, sparks issuing from his hair. Hitherto shalt thou come, no further. Here thy proud waves cease. We have drunk up the eternal man by our unbounded power. Beware, lest we drink up thee, rough demon of the waters. Our God is yours and the king, king of the heavenly hosts. We have no other God but he, thou father of worms and clay. And he has fallen into the deep, rough demon. And loss remains God over all, weak father of worms and clay. I know I was Erthona, keeper of the gates of heaven. But now I am all-powerful loss, and Erthona is but my shadow. Doubting stood Tharmas in the solemn darkness. His dim eyes swam in red tears. He reared his waves above the head of loss and wrath, but pitying back withdrew with many a sigh. Now he resolved to destroy loss, and now his tears flowed down. In scorn stood loss, red sparks of blighting from his furious head flew over the waves of Tharmas. Pitying, Tharmas stayed his waves. For Anatharman shrieked amain, crying, O oh, my sweet world built by the architect divine, whose love to loss and Anatharman, thou rash abhorred demon in thy fury hast overthrown. What sovereign architect, said Dharmas, dare my will control? For if I will, I urge these waters. If I will, they sleep in peace beneath my awful frown. My will shall be my law. So saying, in a wave he raped pride Anatharman, far apart from loss, but covered her with softest brooding care on a broad wave in the warm west, balming her bleeding wound. Oh, how loss howled at the rending asunder. All the fibers rent where Anatharman joined to his left side in grinding pain. He, falling on the rocks, bellowed his dollar till the blood stanched. Then in ululation wailed his woes upon the wind. And Tharmas called to the dark specter who upon the shores with dislocated limbs had fallen. 
The specter rose in pain, a shadow, blue, obscure, and dismal, like a shadow of lead bent by its fall from a high tower, the dolorous shadow rose. Go forth, said Tharmas, works of joy are thine. Obey and live. So shall the spongy marrow issuing from thy splintered bones bonify, and thou shalt have rest when this thy labor is done. Go forth, bear Anatharman back to the eternal prophet, build her a bower in the midst of all my dashing waves. Make first a resting place for loss in Anatharman, then thou shalt have rest. If thou refusest, dashed abroad on all my waves, thy limbs shall separate in stench and rotting, and thou become a prey to all my demons of despair and hope. The specter of Urthona, seeing Anatharman, writhed his cloudy form in jealous fear, and muttering thunders hoarse and casting round thick glooms, thus uttered his fierce pangs of heart. Tharmas, I know thee. How are we altered, our beauty decayed? For still I know thee, though in this horrible room whelmed, thou once the mildest son of heaven, are now become a rage, a terror to all living things. Think not that I am ignorant that thou art risen from the dead, or that my power forgot. I slumber here in weak repose. I well remember the day, the day of terror and abhorrence, when fleeing from the battle, thou, fleeting like the raven of dawn, outstretching an expanse where ne'er expanse had been, drewest all the sons of Beulah into thy dread vortex, following the eddying spirit down the hills of Beulah. All my sons stood round me at the anvil, where new heated the wedge of iron glowed furious, prepared for spades and mattocks. Hearing the symphonies of war loud sounding, all my sons fled from my side. Then pangs smote me unknown before. I saw my loins begin to break forth into veiny pipes, and writhe before me in the wind, conglobing, trembling with strong vibrations, the bloody mass began to animate. I, bending over, wept bitter tears incessant, still beholding how the piteous form dividing and dividing from my loins, a weak and piteous soft cloud of snow, a female pale and weak, I soft embraced my counterpart, called a love. I named her Anatharman, but found myself and her together issuing down the tide which now our rivers were become, delving through caverns huge of gory blood, struggling to be delivered from our bonds. She strove in vain. Not so Orthona strove, for breaking forth a shadow blue, obscure, and dismal from the breathing nostrils of Ezion, I issued into the air, divided from Anatharman. I howled in sorrow. I beheld thee rotting upon the rocks. I pitying hovered over thee. I protected thy ghastly course from vultures of the deep. Then wherefore shouldst thou rage against me, who thee guarded in the night of death from harm? Tharmas replied, Art thou Orthona, my friend, my old companion, with whom I lived in happiness before that deadly night when Urizen gave the horses of light into the hands of Luva? Thou knowest not what Tharmas knows. Oh, I could tell thee tales that would enrage thee, as it has enraged me, even from death in wrath and fury. But now come, bear back thy lovely Anatharman, for thou hast her here before thine eyes. But my sweet Anion is vanished, and I never more shall see her unless thou, O Shadow, wilt protect this son of Anion, and him assist to bind the fallen king, lest he should rise again from death in all his dreary power. Bind him, take Anatharman for thy sweet reward, while I in vain am driven on false hope, hope, sister of despair. Groaning, the terror rose and drave his solid rocks before upon the tide, till underneath the feet of loss a world dark dreadful rose, and Anatharman lay at loss's feet. The dolorous shadow joyed, weak hope appeared around his head. Tharmas before loss stood, and thus the voice of Tharmas rolled. Now all comes into the power of Tharmas. Urizen is fallen, and Luva hidden in the elemental forms of life and death. Rathona is my son. 
Lost thou art your Thona and Tharmas as God. The eternal man is sealed, never to be delivered. I roll my floods over his body. My billows and waves pass over him. The sea encompasses him and monsters of the deep are his companions. Dreamer of furious oceans, cold sleeper of weeds and shells, the eternal form shall never renew. My uncertain prevails against thee, yet though I rage, God, over all. A portion of my life that in eternal fields in comfort wandered with my flocks at noon and laid her head upon my wearied bosom at night, she is divided. She is vanished, even like Luva and Vala. Why did foul ambition seize thee, Urizen, prince of light? And why thee, O Luva, prince of love, till Tharmas was divided? And I, what can I now behold but an eternal death before my eyes, and an eternal weary work to strive against the monstrous forms that breed among my silent waves? Is this to be a god? Far rather would I be a man, to know sweet science and to do with simple companions, sitting beneath a tent and viewing sheepholds and soft pastures. Take thou the ham of Urthona, rebuild these furnaces. Dost thou refuse? Mind I the sparks that issue from thy air. I will compel thee to rebuild by these my furious waves, death choose or life. Thou strugglest in my waters, now choose life, and all the elements shall serve thee to their soothing flutes, their sweet and spiriting lyres thy labors shall administer, and they to thee only remit, not faint, not thou, my son, now thou dost know what tis to strive against the demon of waters. So saying, Tharmas on his furious chariots of the deep departed far into the unknown, and left a wondrous void round loss. Afar his waters bore on all sides round, with noise of wheels and horses' hooves and trumpets, horns and clarions. Terrified Loss beheld the ruins of Urizen beneath, a horrible chaos to his eyes, a formless, unmeasurable death, whirling up broken rocks on high into the dismal air, and fluctuating all beneath in eddies of molten fluid. Then Law with terrible hands seized on the ruined furnaces of Urizen. Enormous work, he builded them anew, labor of ages in the darkness and the war of Tharmas, and Loss formed anvils of iron petrific, for his blows petrify with incessant beating many a rock, many a planet. Yours and slept in a stone stupor in the nether abyss, a dreamful, horrible state in tossings on his icy bed, freezing to solid all beneath. His gray, oblivious form stretched over the immense, heaves and strong shudders, silent his voice and brooding contemplation stretching out from north to south its mighty power. Round him, Loss rolled furious, his thunderous wheels from furnace to furnace, tending diligent the contemplative terror, frightened in his scornful sphere, frightened with cold infectious madness in his hands the thundering hammer of Urthona, forming under his heavy hand the hours, the days, and years, in chains of iron round the limbs of Urizen, linked hour to hour and night to day and day to night and year to year in periods of pulsative fury mills he formed and works of many wheels resistless in the power of darker thona but anatharman wrapped in clouds wailed loud for his loss beat the anvils of Urthona link by link, the chains of sorrow warping on the winds and whirling round in the dark deep lashed on the limbs of Anatharman. And the sulfur fires belched from the furnaces wreathed round her, chained in ceaseless fire. The lovely female howled, and yours and beneath deep groaned, deadly between the hammers, beating grateful to the ears of loss. Absorbed in dire revenge, he drank with joy the cries of Anatharman and the groans of Urizen, fuel for his wrath and for his pity secret feeding on thoughts of cruelty. The specter wept at his dire labors when from ladles huge he poured the molten iron round the limbs of Anatharman. But when he poured it round the bones of Urizen, he laughed, hollow upon the hollow wind. His shadowy form obeying the voice of loss, compelled he labored round the furnaces. 
And thus began the binding of yours and day and night in fear, circling round the dark demon with howlings, dismay, and sharp blightings. The prophet of eternity beat on his iron links and links of brass, and as he beat round the howling demon, terrified at the shapes enslaved humanity put on. He became what he beheld, raging against Tharmas's God and uttering ambiguous words, blasphemous, filled with envy, firm resolved on hate eternal in his vast disdain. He labored, beating the links of fate, link after link, an endless chain of sorrows. The eternal mind bounded, began to roll, eddies of wrath, ceaseless, round and round, in the sulfurous form, surging thick, settled the lake, bright and shining clear, white as the snow, forgetfulness, dumbness, necessity, in chains of the mind locked up, in fetters of ice, shrinking, disorganized, rent from eternity, Lost beat on his fetters and heated his furnaces and poured iron solder and solder of brass. Restless, the immortal enchained, heaving, dolorous, anguished, unbearable, till a roof, shaggy wild, enclosed in an orb his fountain of thought. In a horrible, dreamful slumber like the linked chain, a vast spine writhed in torment upon the wind, shooting pained ribs like a bending cavern, and bones of solidness froze over all his nerves of joy. A first age pass, a state of dismal woe. From the caverns of his jointed spine, down sunk with fright, a red round globe, hot burning, deep, deep down into the abyss, panting, conglobing, trembling, shooting out ten thousand branches around his solid bones, and a second age passed over. In harrowing fear, rolling his nervous brain, shot branches on high into two little orbs hiding in two little caves, hiding carefully from the wind. His eyes beheld the deep, and a third age passed, in a state of dismal woe. The pangs of hope began in heavy pain, striving, struggling, two ears in close volutions from beneath his orbs of vision, spiring shot out, petrified as they grew, and a fourth age passed over in a state of dismal woe. In ghastly torment sick, hanging upon the wind, two nostrils bent down to the deeps, and a fifth age passed in a state of dismal woe. In ghastly torment sick, within his ribs bloated round a craving hungry cavern, thence arose his channeled throat, then like a red flame a tongue of hunger and thirst appeared, and a sixth age passed of dismal woe. Enraged and stifled with torment, he threw his right arm to the north, his left arm to the south, shooting out in anguish deep, and his feet stamped the nether abyss in trembling, howling in dismay. And a seventh age passed over in a state of dismal woe. The council of God on high watching over the body of man, clothed in Luva's robes of blood, saw and wept, descending over Beulah's mild, moon-covered regions. The daughters of Beulah saw the divine vision. They were comforted, and as a double female form, loveliness and perfection of beauty, they bowed the head and worshipped, and with mild voice spoke these words. Lord, Savior, if thou hadst been here, our brother had not died, and now we know that whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, he will give it thee. For we are weak women, and dare not lift our eyes to the divine pavilions. Therefore in mercy thou appearest clothed in Luva's garments, that we may behold thee and live. Behold, eternal death is in Beulah. Behold, we perish and shall not be found, unless thou grant a place in which we may be hidden under the shadow of wings. For if we who are but for a time, and who pass away in winter, behold these wonders of eternity, we shall consume. Such were the words of Beulah of the feminine emanation. The Empyrean groaned throughout. All Eden was darkened. The course of Albion lay in the rock. The sea of time and space beat round the rock in mighty waves. And as a polypus that vegetates beneath the sea, the limbs of man vegetated in monstrous forms of death. A human polypus of death. 
the Savior, mild and gentle, bent over the course of death, saying, If you will believe, your brother shall rise again. And first he found the limit of opacity and named it Satan. In Albion's bosom, for in every human bosom, these limits stand. Next he found the limit of contraction and named it Adam, while yet those beings were not born, nor knew of good nor evil. Then wondrously the starry wheels felt the divine hand. Limit was put to eternal death. Lost felt the limit and saw the finger of God touch the seventh furnace in terror. And Lost beheld the hand of God over his furnaces, beneath the deeps in dismal darkness, beneath immensity. And terrors Lost shrunk from his task. His great hammer fell from his hand. His fires hid their strong limbs in smoke. For with noises ruinous, hurlings and clashings and groans, the immortal endured, the bound in a deadly sleep. Pale terror seized the eyes of Loss as he beat round the hurtling demon, terrified at the shapes enslaved humanity put on. He became what he beheld. He became what he was doing. He was himself transformed. The globe of life blood trembled, branching out its roots, fibers writhing upon the winds, fibers of blood, milk, and tears, in pangs, eternity on eternity. At length in tears and cries embodied a female form trembling and pale, waves before his deathy face. Spasms seized his muscular fibers, writhing to and fro, his pallid lips unwilling moved, as yours and howled, his loins waved like the sea, and then a tharm and shriek, his knees each other smoke, and then he looked with stony eyes on yours and and then swift writhed his neck involuntary to the couch where Anatharman lay. The bones of yours and hurtle on the wind, the bones of lost twinge, and his iron sinews bend like lead and fold into unusual forms, dancing and howling, stamping the abyss. End of the fourth night.